Hello. Uh, so we will now start with module three of transmission and distribution, the codes on transmission and distribution. So you have seen about the performance characteristics, how to uh, calculate the resistance, reactance, capacitance of lines. Now we will look at the line modeling. Okay. So this is Professor Umar Rao from RV College of uh, Engineering, bringing you the slides and the presentation under the e sectiona program of uh, VTU. So, uh, module three is uh, uh, basically about generalized uh, circuit constants. And um, we will see what we'll be doing in this session. So now we have seen transmission lines. I have just put some pictures. So as you can see, some of them go on for hundreds of uh, uh, kilometers. And uh, some of the lines may be short and then you evacuate the power. So how do I make a distinction between these lines? Okay, a line of say 50 kilometers and a line of 500 kilometers. So from a modeling perspective and from a performance perspective, uh, do I use the same yardsticks or uh, do they behave similarly? These are some of the things we would be seeing in this module. So basically the syllabus of the module is a classification of lines into short, medium, and long. And uh, we will see the current and voltage relationships using the generalized circuit constants. And how do I calculate the line regulation? And uh, very important, Ferranti effect. Uh, what is the effect in short lines and medium lines and long lines? And uh, then we will find the equivalent circuit of all these and uh, we will calculate the ABCD constants, which are nothing but the generalized uh, constants uh, for all the different cases. And we'll also work out some problems about how to evaluate them, how to compute the efficiency, regulation, et cetera, for different lines. So in this session, the learning objectives primarily are to calculate the parameters of the uh, line not as in the actual line, but you can say of the system. So actual line you have seen, there is a resistance, capacitance, et cetera, and how do we classify them? So that is the agenda uh, for this session. Now, so what are some of the features we consider uh, when we are modeling? So the first is the line parameters themselves are distributed. So you see, if you have a long, if you have a line of 50 kilometers, and I say the resistance of the line is three ohms, what are you talking of? You're talking of the resistance between the end to end, end to end terminals. So if I measure the resistance there, it is three ohms. Where is this resistance? Is it same as having the rheostat of three ohms? Apart from the current carrying capacity, is it just that it is equivalent to a rheostat of uh, three ohms? or a small electronic capacitor of three ohms, which is hardly around two centimeters in length. And I'm talking of a 50 kilometer line. So you say this resistance is distributed along the line. Here, it is not lumped at one place. It's a conductor, right? So there is a resistance throughout the line. So whenever you lump it, lump means I just show only the two terminals. So when I just draw this transmission line, you do not know whether the line is 50 kilometers or 100 kilometers or 500 kilometers. It's clear? And obviously, the behavior will be different from taking a rheostat of three ohms, isn't it? Though I would represent that also in a similar manner. So how you represent as a circuit will not reflect the actual physical component. Clear? So when we represent it in circuit diagrams, we lump it. I just show the two terminals and put one small resistor. 
when I want to show the modeling. That's called as a lumped parameter. Lumped parameters are okay for some conditions, right? But then when I take a line length of 50 kilometers, what about 200 kilometers? What about 500 kilometers? Right. So it is not between, though it is between two terminals, it is distributed along the length of the line. So instead of specifying the resistance, I would rather specify the resistance per kilometer, the inductance per kilometer, the capacitance per kilometer. So then if it's a 10 ohm, 10 kilometer line, you can calculate the resistance. If it's a 50 kilometer, you can find out. If it's 500 kilometers, you can calculate what is the values of R, L, and C, et cetera. Clear? That is the meaning of the statement that the line parameters are distributed. Though you show it between two points, it can run to hundreds of kilometers, right? So based on certain assumptions, Based on certain assumptions, we lump the parameters to develop a circuit model. I lump it, right? And I can use the same circuit model for three phase and single phase. The only difference is in a single phase, I will have two conductors, a forward conductor and a return conductor. If it's a single phase system, I'm not talking of line to neutral. Uh, voltage. No, I'm talking of a single phase system. So you have one forward conductor and one return conductor. So if, if the distance between the source and the destination, the supply and the load is 10 kilometers and it's a single phase system, I would have 10 kilometers of conductor in the forward path and 10 kilometers of conductor to carry the return current. Isn't it? carry the return current. So what is the total length of the conductor used? It will be length of the conductor used will be 20 kilometers. 10 plus 10 in the return path, 20 kilometers. So if I know the resistance per kilometer and I want to lump this single phase circuit, then I have to multiply the resistance per kilometer into 20, not 10. Are you clear? Why? Because I will have I will have an equal number of kilometers in the return path. So whatever is the parameter we consider, I have to consider for two conductors. Clear? Now, in contrast, you think you are connecting, you are connecting a single phase load between the line and neutral. So I have a three phase supply. I have a three phase supply and I connect three loads between three line to neutral. So now what happens? You know that in the four wire system, the neutral current is very small. And if it is perfectly balanced, the neutral current will be zero. So therefore, when I draw the single phase equivalent of a three phase system, I consider only one conductor because I have only the line conductor. The neutral conductor doesn't carry much current. So I can or not consider it, right? It doesn't add too much heating, neither does it create much voltage drop or anything. Are, are, are you uh, uh, clear about this point? So when you lump it uh, for three phase circuits, we'll just multiply it by the number of uh, kilometers. Whereas if it is for a single phase, you would consider two conductors, okay? So, uh, the R, L, and C we use in three phase are the per phase resistance, per phase inductance, and line to neutral capacitance, assuming the supply and load are balanced. If they are unbalanced, there is a different technique to solve it. There is a different way you solve it. Now, when we consider the performance of the transmission lines, what are the parameters of interest? What are the parameters of interest? First, I have the voltage drop. Right? I have the voltage drop. Then I have, that is what is the voltage drop in the line? What's the voltage drop in the line? 
Next, I have losses in the line. How much of loss is there? The I squared R loss. Predominantly, whenever you talk of loss, you mean the active loss. That is the I squared R loss. Though you do have an I squared X loss, that is the reactive uh, power loss. Whenever we talk of losses, we mean the active power loss. And what is the efficiency of transmission? That means how much of the sending end power actually reaches the receiving end power? How much of it is lost? So we have to take into account that. And then what is the voltage regulation? You know the meaning. When you use the word regulation, you mean the change in the voltage. So there are some standard definitions for these and we will find out what they are. So first, let us come to classification. So for classification, we normally consider four param three parameters. That is the line resistance, the line inductance, and the line capacitance. The conductance of the line, which is because of the leakage currents, is normally not considered in the models. Okay, because the le leakage current is very, very small, we don't consider that. So we model the lines based on the values of R, L, and C. The capacitance C is the capacitance between the two conductors in a single phase system. What is the capacitance between the two conductors? And in a three phase system, it is the capacitance between the line and the ground. Here, it's between the line and the ground. And in a three phase system, R, L, C represent the parameters per phase. Represent the parameters per phase. And remember the capacitance forms a shunt path along the length of the line. It is distributed. So it is as if you have capacitance at every point, infinite. But obviously I cannot do much if we, uh, you know, take infinity. I'll be lost. Right? So what we do, we try to model it in some meaningful way. So that's why, you know, in the first statement I said, under some assumptions, we will be modeling the lines. Though we all know that it is distributed along the entire length of the line. So first, let us take short lines. So short lines have a line length of less than 80 kilometers. See, this 80 is not a sacrosanct value. I can't draw a line and say anything less than 80 is short and anything more than 80 is long or medium, whatever. No. So some people, they say they take a, a cutoff of 100 kilometers. So some say 60 kilometers, it's fine. So, you know, somewhere between 60 to 100, we call it as a short line. Essentially, what do I mean by this? So that is important. The essence of the model when I call a line as short. So instead of just saying a short line is any line which is less than 80 kilometers or 100 kilometers, let us see whether, if I can refine that definition. So these lines, Normally, the voltage levels will be less than 20 kV. And uh, in the short line model, the capacitance of the line is neglected. Okay. And the line is simply represented by a series impedance R plus Jx. So you see, I have just put an RL element here. So R plus Jx. So now let me slightly refine my definition of a short line instead of defining it in terms of length let me define it in terms of the model so instead of calling a short line i will call it as a short line model so the short line model is the model of the transmission line where the capacitance of the line is neglected Clear? So I'm talking in terms of the model. You have a 500 kilometer line. You don't want to take into account the capacitance. Then you, you it, it is a short line model. Okay. So normally up to why we also have a length is up to around 80 to 100 kilometers. Neglecting the capacitance does not cause any serious errors in computation of the previous parameters we saw. What were their parameters? 
of performance, parameters of performance, the voltage drop, the losses, the transmission efficiency and voltage regulation. Okay. So if up to around 100 kilometers, when you neglect the capacitance, you don't get too much of an error in these parameters. That's why we say you can neglect it. You can discard it, not show it in the model. So I would rather prefer to use the word model along with the line. I would rather prefer to use, I call it as a short line model. And generally these models are good for lines less than around 80 to 100 kilometers. Let's come to that understanding. So essentially what is it? It is simply a line represented as a lumped RL element. It's a lumped RL element. That is a short line model. Next. So in this circuit, I want you want to draw your attention to this circuit. This is how it's normally drawn. Vs is the sending end voltage. You see here, I have a plus and a minus. And Vr is again a plus and a minus. So the Vr is the receiving end voltage. And the sending end voltage current, sending end current and the receiving end current, both are same because it is series. There is no parallel capacitor. So it is in series. So Is is equal to I. This is the model. Okay. So Vs is the sending end voltage. Vr is the receiving end voltage. In three phase systems, the figure represents a single phase equivalent circuit. So Vs is the single phase equivalent voltage and at the sending end. And Vr is the single phase voltage equivalent at the receiving end. So that means what is the meaning of single phase? It is the line to neutral voltage, not the line to line, it's the line to neutral. Remember in a three phase circuit, I do not have anything like a line to line resistance. You can have a line to line capacitance, the capacitance between two lines, yes. The capacitance between line and ground, yes. But you cannot have a line to line resistance. There is nothing like that. It is only resistance of one line. So there is a phase per phase. Clear? Similarly, the inductance, because it's a series element. Inductance and resistances are series element. I do not have any anything called as a line to line resistance or a line to line inductance. Whereas you do have a line to line capacitance and you have a line to neutral capacitance. Okay? Fine. Now, medium lines. So lines between, sorry, this is not 20, this is 200. So lines between 80 to 200 kilometers are called medium lines, 80 to 200 kilometers. The capacitance of the line has to be modeled in this case, okay? It is lumped and modeled as a shunt capacitor because you know capacitance is between, between the line and the ground or between the two of the conductors in a single phase circuit. So there are two popularly used models, though, though there are other ones, there are two popularly used models for medium lines and they are called as the T model and the pi model. Okay, so I have the shunt capacitance and I have the series impedance that is R plus JX. Now all these are distributed. Somehow I have to lump it. I have to lump it. So two popular ways of doing it are this. This is called as the T model. So in the T model, what I do, the line between the sending end and the receiving end, the line between the sending end and the receiving end, I split it at the center. Okay. I create a node at the center. I create a node at the center and half of the impedance on one side and half on the other side. So I have Z by two and Z by two. Z by two and Z by two. If you, if you can uh, see here, here I have Z by two and here I have Z by two. And this is the sending end and this is the receiving end. Clear? So at the center, I have put a node. I have put a node at the center. And the entire admittance, Due to the shunt capacitance of the line, I lump it into one shunt admittance. 
I lump it into one shunt admittance. Okay. Next, in the pi model, what do I do? Again, this is the sending end and this is the receiving end, right? Now, impedance, I put it as one. I don't split it, Z, okay? And then the admittance, I split it into two, half at the sending end and half at the receiving end. Remember, it is in parallel, so the admittance will get divided by two. So y by two on the sending end and y by two at the receiving end. So obviously because of the shape of the circuit, I'm sure this, this pi and t nomenclature you would have studied in network theory also, we call it as the pi model and the t model. Okay, now what, which one do you think would be better? Which one do you think would be better? Yes, and which do you think we would use more commonly in all our power system analysis and when I want to, wherever I want to model lines. So you see what is happening in this T model. This is the sending end node and this is the receiving end node. Let us say this line is, uh, uh, you know, let me just take the in uh, the pen. So let us say this line is between bus P and bus Q, bus P and bus Q, node P and node Q. I have a line, I have a transmission line between P and Q. Okay, but what am I doing now? I have introduced some new node in the center. What my point? I have the line between P and Q, between node P and node Q. There is no node in the center. There is nothing in the center. But here in my circuit equivalent, I have introduced a node that is to model it because I want to split it into two. I want to split it into two. So for my convenience of splitting it into two, I have modeled it this way. Okay, so an additional node, which is not there in the physical system is introduced. Clear? So if I form the network equation, nodal equations, then I'll get extra nodes here. I'll get one extra node for each of the lines. So T model therefore is not very popular. It's not used. Pi models are commonly used most often in all our uh, load flow studies and for transmission uh, stability studies, etc. We model the transmission line as a pi model. So pi models are more popular. And the reason is, you see, I have not introduced any extra node. This is node P and this is node Q. So no extra node has been introduced. So this model is more popular. Okay, next. Okay, so the line voltage uh, for medium lines is moderately high. So it is around 2200 kV, right? Short lines we saw. So what is the difference? Again, we will call it as the medium line model. Medium line model, right? Next, we have long lines. That is lines greater than 200 kilometers. As I said, this 200 is not a line. You know, you mark it, no. Some authors, they say anything more than 300 is a long line, okay? So only thing is you have to understand when I say I am going to use a long line model, it means that I have to somehow consider the distributed nature of the parameters, okay? Distributed nature of the parameters. That means I cannot use the same, uh, I cannot lump it. I can't use the short line model where capacitance is not included at all, or I cannot use the pi model or T model because they're all lumped models. Whereas I want to capture the distributed nature. Now, why? Because distributed, when you neglect this distributed nature of the parameter, you may end up with some inaccuracies and you may not get some idea of some changes in the system. So when we do long line models in detail, I will tell you how to model it. Whereas now we are clear about the short line model and the medium line model. Long line, we will consider it later on when we do the long lines and how we uh, account for the distributed nature in the model. Now we will see some definitions. So the two, two most important performance parameters are the efficiency and the regulation. 
So like any other device, the transmission efficiency is defined as the power delivered at the receiving end by the power sent from the sending end into 100. That's an efficiency, you know, output power by input power. So output power is the power at the load, that is at the receiving end. Input power is the power at the sending end. Now, what is the power at the sending end? It will be the output power plus losses. Plus losses. You know that. Even this formula is very uh, commonly used. Now, how do I calculate the powers? We will see. Voltage regulation. So how do you define regulation? One definition is the difference between the sending end voltage and the receiving end voltage as a percentage of the receiving end voltage. So Vs minus Vr by Vr into 100%. This is one definition of the voltage regulation. Obviously, this will depend on the loading condition because the load will determine the current and the current will determine the voltage drop in the line and the voltage drop will determine the difference between the sending end and the receiving end. Therefore, the entire voltage regulation and efficiency also because losses again will depend on current. So regulation and efficiency both are heavily dependent on the loading condition. On the loading condition. Now, under no load condition, there is no current flowing through the line. So there is no voltage drop in the line if we neglect the shunt uh, capacitances. So the receiving end voltage is equal to the sending end voltage. On load, the receiving end voltage drops because of the voltage drop in the line. Voltage drop in the line. So another way of defining regulation is also as the change in the voltage at the receiving end from no load to full load. This you have used in machines also. The no load and transformers, no load voltage minus full load, full load voltage divided by full load voltage into 100. You have used it in electrical machines, you have used it in transformers. So same thing here also for the transmission line, the no load voltage at the receiving end minus the full load voltage at the receiving end as a percentage of the full load voltage at the receiving end. Now, how do I calculate the power, the receiving end power per phase in a three-phase circuit is Vr, Ir, cos pi R. Vr is the line to neutral voltage at the receiving end. Ir is the current and phi R, cos phi R is the power factor at the receiving end. This is the power per phase. Remember the three phase circuits, I always represent a single phase equivalent. I represent a single phase equivalent. So we are represent a single phase voltage, which is a line to neutral voltage. And so the three phase power will be into three. So the power per phase, we are assuming only balanced circuits and you cannot draw a single phase equivalent for an unbalanced circuit because the line to neutral voltages will be different for each phase. So you can draw the single phase equivalent only for a balanced circuit. You can't draw it for an unbalanced circuit. And the three phase power will be the single phase power into three. You can also calculate it as root three VRL IRL cos pi R, where VRL is the line to line voltage. And IR is, since all the single phase equivalents, they're all in, uh, uh, star connections because you can't draw for a delta the single phase equivalent because I don't have a neutral line to neutral voltage is not there in the delta to represent if you have a mixture of star and delta so any delta you have to convert it into equivalent star whether it's a source or a load and then you get the neutral uh, point so it is root 3 VRL IRL cos phi R this you have studied in basic electrical engineering how to calculate the three phase power in terms of the line quantities Similarly, the sending end power, I can calculate it as Vs, Is, cos phi S and uh, into 3 would be the total sending end power or I can also cal calculate it in terms of the line voltage and line current as root 3 Vsl, Isl, cos phi S. 
here. So once I calculate the powers, I can calculate the efficiency. Now let us see the current and voltage relations between the uh, sending end and the receiving end. Generally, we use what is called as the generalized circuit model. In network theory, you have studied something called as two port networks, isn't it? Two port networks. So what do we do in two port networks? I represent the network by two ports. The, entire other, the rest of the network is inside, inside the box. And then one port is the input port and then you have the output port. So in network theory, we call the input current I1, voltage V1. And then similarly on the output side, you have V2, I2. And I1 and I2, both are shown entering the network. This is what you would have seen in network theory. And then you have calculated for two port networks, Z parameters, Y parameters, H parameters, transmission parameters, and so on. In general, we call it as two port network parameters. Clear? So similar to that, the transmission lines are normally modeled using what is called as the generalized circuit model. So this model is called generalized because I can use it for short line, long line, medium line, any line. Pi model, T model, any other model, right? Only thing is I have to compute the generalized constants correctly, depending on what model I choose. Now let us see what is the generalized model like. Before that, I want you to, I want to draw your attention to this uh, figure. So here um, you see, I have, I have the input voltage, sending end voltage Vs. And Is, you see, is like our regular two port. It is into the network into the network, the sending end current. Only thing is here, you see, receiving end current is like this, out of the network. That's because at the receiving end, I connect the load. So the load will draw the current. So in generalized circuit constants, we show the receiving output port current outside the network, out of the network. Whereas in circuit theory, you may have shown it into the network. See, in circuit theory, whenever, you, in, if you recall your network theory, you would have shown I2 like this. The output port current like this. But here it is shown out, out from the network. So remember this. Okay, fine. And I have the receiving end voltage. I have the receiving end voltage. The receiving end current out of the network. The sending end current into the network. So we define, we define some generalized circuit constants to denote the relationship between the sending end and the receiving end. This is universal everywhere. So how do we do it? We say Vs is equal to AVR plus BIR. So I, you, you're, used to, you're used to writing such uh, equations. Okay, you would have written in terms of Z parameters, V1 is equal to Z11, I1 plus Z12, I2, right? V2 is equal to Z21, I1 plus Z22, I2. You are you're used to writing such uh, equations for the two ports, same way. So Vs is equal to AVR plus BIR and Is is equal to CVR plus DIR. So if you look at this set of equations, VR and IR are independent. Always the independent parameters come on the right-hand side. Because VR and IR, they are on the load side. So if I know the load details, VR, IR, I can calculate what is the sending end voltage and sending end current. Once you know the sending end voltage, sending end current, you can find out the efficiency, regulation, everything. Clear? Now, why is it called as generalized? Because I have not told you what is the transmission line model. It could be short line, medium line, long line. Only thing is, depending on the model, I have to correctly calculate A, B, C, D. I have to correctly calculate A, B, C, D. So it's a universal model, a general model. Now, in this equation, a few important uh, issues. Vs, Is, Vr, Ir are all phasor quantities. 
here they are phases. Therefore, A, B, C, D are all complex numbers. They are complex numbers. Is it clear? Fine. Now let's see how to define it. Definition of ABCD parameters. Now do you just see here? How can I find out A? How can I find out A? If I let IR equal to zero, supposing I make IR zero, Right? In both the cases, I make IR 0. Now, from the first equation, when IR is 0, A will be Vs by Vr. Right? Because IR is 0, A will be Vs by Vr. Similarly, C will be Is by Vr. Clear? So, when I make IR equal to 0, A will be Vs by Vr and C will be Is by Vr. Now, let me do Supposing I make VR zero, if I make VR zero, then from this first equation, when VR is zero, B will be VS by IR and D will be IS by IR. Again, this is nothing new. You're used to such definition. Z11 is V1 by I1 when I2 is equal to zero. Right? So open circuit impedance, short circuit admittance. So when I2 is equal to zero means the port two is open because the current is zero. So I define Z11 as the ratio of V1 by I1 when port two is zero. So on, same way, okay? So let us see how we define. So A is equal to Vs by Vr when IR is equal to zero. So the definition of A is a is the ratio of sending end voltage to receiving end voltage phases, phasor quantities, mind you, when receiving end current is zero, which means the receiving end is open circuited. Clear? IR is zero means there is no current in the receiving end, which means that the receiving end is open circuited. The receiving end is open circuited. Okay. Fine. Since it's a ratio of two voltages, it has no dimension. It's a ratio of two voltages with the same unit, two, two parameters with the same unit. So the units get cancelled and it has no unit. It's a dimensionless quantity, but it is a complex number because it's the ratio of two phasors and phasors are complex numbers represented as complex numbers. Next, B is Vs by IR when Vr is equal to zero, receiving end voltage is zero. So when is the voltage across a port zero? When the port is short circuited. When the port is short circuited. So, and v, B is the ratio of a voltage and a current. So any ratio of V and I will give you the unit of ohms. It's the unit of ohms, right? Therefore, B is defined as the ratio of sending end voltage to receiving end current when receiving end is open circuited. Sorry, short circuited because Vr is zero. When receiving end is short circuited, the unit is ohms. Next, C is equal to Is by Vr when Ir is equal to zero. Ir is zero, receiving end current is zero. Therefore, receiving end is open circuited. Clear? And C is the ratio of a current to voltage. The ratio of any current to voltage has got the unit of admittance. So it is MOS. So C has the unit of MO. Next, D. D is the ratio of sending end current to short circuit current at the receiving end. What is it? D is IS by IR when VR is equal to zero. The receiving end voltage is zero. That means the receiving end is short circuited. Therefore, and again, it's a ratio of a current phasor, two current phasors. So again, it is dimensionless. So A and D are dimensionless. And B has the dimension of ohms. And C has the dimension of Mo admittance. So we, we, are, we can derive ABCD parameters for different models. Okay, 
and we make no distinction between single phase and three phase circuits. Only thing is you have to calculate that RLC correctly, RLNC correctly. So parameters we'll just see quickly. Vs is the sending end voltage, and if it is three phase, it is sending end phase voltage, and Is is the sending end current, sending end phase current for three phase. Similarly, VR, IR are the receiving end voltage and current for single phase and receiving end phase voltage and current. R is the loop resistance. That means for two conductors. And in three phase, R is the resistance per phase. Similarly, the inductance is the loop inductance. And uh, for the three phase, it would be the inductance per phase or reactance per phase. And the capacitance in single phase is the capacitance between two conductors and in a three phase, it is between the line to ground or line to neutral. And phi s is the sending and power factor angle for both three phase and single phase. And phi r is the receiving end power factor angle for both single phase and three phase. Now, are these ABCD parameters arbitrary or is there some relationship between them? We will see now. The ABCD parameters exhibit two important properties in symmetrical networks. Only in symmetrical networks. Okay. So what is a symmetrical network? If you look at the network from either of the ports, the network would look the same. That means I view the network from port 1. In this case, the sending end voltage. I see a passive network. And I look at the network from port two, which is the receiving end, and I see another passive network. So when the network is symmetrical, these two networks will be same. So in symmetrical networks, these ABCD parameters exhibit two important properties. What are they? The first one, A is equal to D of diagonal elements. A is equal to D. And the second one is AD minus BC is equal to 1. Clear? So let us prove the uh, uh, second one. See, it, why A is equal to D is because of the way A and B are defined. What is A? You just see here what is A. A is Vs by Vr. Vs by Vr. And then D is Is by Ir. Right? So in symmetrical networks, the ratio of the voltage and the ratio of the current phases will be the same. So A will be equal to D. Right? That's why A is equal to D. Now let us try to prove the other condition. So first, let me assume the receiving end to be short-circuited. That means Vr is 0. And I apply a voltage E at the sending end. So what do I have? Vr is 0. Vs is equal to E. I'm applying a voltage E. And since Vr is equal to 0, what is Vs? Vs is equal to A Vr plus B I R. Vr is 0. Therefore, Vs will be equal to B into I R. Right. So what is I R from this? I R is Vs by B. That is equal to E by B. So I have I R is equal to E by B. Next. Next, let me consider the sending end to be short-circuited and a voltage E applied at the receiving end. So Vs is equal to 0. Sending end is short-circuited. So Vs is 0. And Vr is equal to E. Right? So I have the equation 0. Vs is 0 is equal to Ae plus B I R. Ae plus B I R. So from this, what can I write? I can write I R is equal to minus Ae by B. I R is equal to minus A E by B. Clear? And what is I S? I S is equal to C E plus D I R. This is the equation by our definition of generalized constants. And so C E and I have found what is I R minus A E by B. So D is there minus A D E. -E. So B C minus A D by B B. What am I trying to do now? You just see here. When I short circuit the receiving end, I have the receiving end current. And when I short circuit the sending end, I have the sending end current. Clear? 
uh, are you getting my point so i short circuit the receiving end i am applying a voltage of e at the sending end and i am calculating what is the receiving end current right next what i am doing i am short circuiting the sending end and applying a voltage e at the receiving end and calculating the sending end voltage does this said sorry sending end current does this ring a bell somewhere somewhere are you have you done something like this yes reciprocity theorem reciprocity theorem right you you short circuit the load terminals or one port and give a voltage to another port find the response in the second port then interchange the two both will be the same that is because when the circuit is reciprocal right and now since these are all linear circuits they all obey reciprocity and therefore therefore i have from reciprocity theorem the is obtained in the second case is equal to minus ir why minus ir can anybody tell me why minus ir can you think yes because if you remember ir is out of the network ir is out of the network whereas is is into the network so therefore is will be equal to minus ir because if ir is the current out of the network minus ir is the current into the network and so the net currents into the network will be the same and therefore is is equal to minus ir so ir in the first case i saw is e by b that is minus e by b is minus ir is in the second case is bc minus ad by e by b we saw this so from this i have bc minus ad or ad minus bc is equal to 1 bc minus ad is minus 1 therefore ad minus bc is equal to 1 this is a very important uh, property which we will be using for different models of the lines okay so i can write in matrix form vs into is is equal to sorry vs is is equal to abcd so this is called as the generalized circuit matrix constants a b c d are called as the generalized circuit constants so this tells you how to calculate the sending end and receive sending end voltage and current in terms of receiving end voltage and current that's why it's called as a current and voltage relationship the relationship between sending end and receiving end now if i want the reverse if i want to calculate the receiving end parameters in terms of the sending end parameters so vr and ir is equal to abcd inverse vs is so i get the inverse matrix is d minus b minus c a here i have made use of the property ad minus bc is equal to 1 ad minus bc is nothing but the determinant of this matrix ad minus bc is the determinant of this matrix and that is equal to 1 so this gives me how to calculate the receiving end parameter if i know the sending end voltage and current right so therefore in this session i spoke about the classification into short medium and long and we saw how to model the short line and the long and the medium line long line model we have deferred it for for uh, later and basically it tells you how you account for the parameters of the of the transmission line and the performance parameters of interest are the losses which determine the efficiency and the voltage drop which determines the regulation which determines the regulation then we saw that any line can be modeled using generalized circuit constants okay and these generalized circuit constants have two important properties for reciprocal and symmetric networks the first property is a is equal to d and the second property is ad minus bc is equal to 1 thank you